Tales from the Greyside presents... 30 Nights of Halloween. Ha 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 ha! Let's make it 31 Nights of Halloween instead, if your heart can stand it. Midnight. For some, the witching hour. You know, Jess, I'm amazed at how quickly I've adapted to your lifestyle. Sleeping through the days, only going out at night. That's what I get for marrying the most respected and craziest mystery writer in America. Midnight. For some, the hour of love. This is where I used to come to make out when I was a teenager. It's still pretty popular. But we're not kids, Jess. Oh, yeah? Mmm. I love you, baby. Midnight. For some, the hour of death. Jenny! It happens every day. Shots echo on big city streets. An innocent victim falls dead. Another life is erased. But here we have a different case, with different participants. So be wary where you walk tonight, because the lady killer craves blood. The fear that has gripped this city for almost a year has reached epic proportions tonight as the lady killer claimed his eighth victim. Mrs. Jenny Stockley, wife of famed reclusive mystery novelist Jess Stockley, was brutally slain by the madman with a taste for beautiful long-haired brunettes. Police report the grief-maddened husband has sworn vengeance on the- Shut up, blast you. Let me alone with my sorrow. Media vultures swooping down at the first taste of blood. Blood, I'll avenge you, Jenny. I'll find that animal and kill him. But first, I must feed. A shiver tears through Stockley's sturdy frame, sending chills for the entire apartment as the man begins to change to what he truly is. A vampire. But the creature now spreading its leaven wings, first in uncontrollably, was not always so cursed. There was a time ten years earlier when Jess Stockley was a struggling young writer, just earning his literary reputation, demanding the ring of total authenticity in his macabre novels. And the search for that authenticity often brought young Stockley into close contact with the dark underbelly of humanity, such as the fateful meeting of a Satanist cult in February 1970. But even in the heart of darkness, beauty beckoned, and beauty called itself... Sarah. I've always been fond of that name. There was a girl I was wild about back at Barclay. Oh, really? Her eyes were hypnotic, alluring. Stockley was convinced he'd finally come across that strange phenomenon known as love at first sight. You mean you don't take this demonology seriously? Seriously? No. I do it for the kick. A kick? Those maniacs back at that meeting weren't off on a kick. There was evil. Palpable evil. Oh, forget about them, Jess. Think about me. Look at me, Jess. Look at me. Stockley saw nothing unusual, only his lust. And in that instant of submission, he died. To rise three days later as one of the undead spending days locked away in fear of a now deadly light, spending nights stalking the helpless. Years of horror and despair and the now unwanted fame passed like waves of blood, and then love. How long have you been with Rolling Stone, Jenny? You're my first major assignment, Mr. Stokely. Jess. It wasn't long before Jess and Jenny married. He kept the horrible truth from her. The vampire became a man again, giving up the taking of human life, preferring thievery to murder. But the moment is now, and after six months of regained humanity, his wife's slaying has unleashed the latent foulness in Jess Stockley's undead soul, and the vampire seeks its prey. There, a life no one will miss. I'm sorry, old man, but my needs must take precedence. I don't want to do this, but I must. Oh, Lord! No! The next night, there is only one story screaming from the airwaves. 
The psychopathic lady killer has sent another crudely scrawled note to the police. This one indicating his next strike will be in the Sheep's Head Bay section of Brooklyn. One rule will be followed in that borough tonight. Keep off the streets. But it is a rule Jess Stockley does not adhere to. The lady killer inevitably strikes in a place where young lovers come to be alone, to escape from their parents and discover each other. But the vampire's reverie is cut short as a haggard figure leaps from the shadows and aims a well-used hunting rifle. Ah, at last he shows himself, at last! Murderer! No! Go away! No more demons! Ugh! The terrified lady killer sprints off, fear forcing his trembling frame to move with amazing speed. But Jess Stockley will not let the man who took his wife's life get away. The vampire's bloodlust is rising. Finally, he finds him hunkered down on a rotting pier. Go away, demon! I did what you said! Now leave me alone! Shut up, animal! Why? Why do you do these sick things? What satisfaction can you get from this senseless butchery? I kill from need. You kill for sport. It's the demons. The others like you. They make me do it. The voices. She was my wife. I loved her. But it's not my fault. The lady killer's neck snaps like a twig and vengeance is done I can't bring myself to drink from this this creature's veins but I crave blood and the thirst must be sated night fades to day then to night once more and in Brooklyn a bizarre murder last night Mrs. Leslie Caputo, 26, was found dead with two small throat wounds, apparently having bled to death. We spoke to Mrs. Caputo's grieving husband. I... I don't understand why anyone would... would do such a thing. She was my wife. I loved her. But it's not my fault. Yet, that's what he said. Oh, Lord, how long can I go on fooling myself? I condemn the lady killer, but we are one and the same. There is no one in Jess Stokely's apartment the next morning as the early news blares on. And these intriguing photos taken by a Manhattan woman from a bedroom window of an as yet unidentified man who just before dawn climbed to the roof of the Benchley Towers and after being pierced by the first rays of the morning sun apparently crumpled to dust. Police have said the photographs are very clever fakes. But we know better, don't we?